we get another DJ's Brew 2 beer review. You know what, guys? I'm feeling extra animated today. Why? Because I've been taking it easy for a couple weeks. DJ hadn't been drinking much beer because I had a nasty ass cold, man. Head cold, all that good stuff my little disease carrier shared with me. And I said, you know what? I need me a big bombastic ass beer for my first beer back. And I'm going to get one that took three breweries to make a collab beer. And the, this beer was brought to me my, by my good buddy Rich up at Rich's World Beer Tour. Have you checked out his channel? If you haven't, what's your problem? Check it out, baby. I'll put his information down here in the notes. Anyways, he sent me a beer that comes from Surly out of Minnesota, Three Floyds, who's in Indiana, and Real Ale out of Texas. What beer is it? It's Blacker. Now, the word Blacker, or its name Blacker, means black in Norse. They're calling it that because this is an Imperial Black IPA. It's clocking in at a big-ass 9.99% ABV and 85 IBUs. Now, you see we have a lovely, like, gargoyle, demon-looking thing because all these, each one of these breweries is all into metal. Um, there's three heads on said gargoyle slash demon, and that represents each one of the breweries. Isn't that awesome? Yes. All these lovely things artists can do these days. So, also around the top of the can, there's a bunch of, like, symbols. These are all medieval symbols, and they stand for, like, uh, alcohol, fermentation, darkness, fire, that kind of thing. All medieval symbols. You can look them up and have your fun day for that. What I'm wondering is, hey, what kind of hops in these? Well, in this particular beer, they're using Warrior, Simcoe, and Centennial. For malts, <clears throat> excuse me, they're using Pale, uh, I think it was, like, Carafa, um, Oats, and um, Crystal. Which means, man, it's going to have that awesome mouthfeel just like abrasive does. That's one of the things I like best about abrasive is the oats they put in there that beefs up that mouthfeel. Now, I am I saw in a review and heard in a review from my good buddy Eric Wood. Shout out to Eric Wood. If you haven't checked out Eric's channel, do so. His information will also be down here in the notes section. We got all kinds of Minnesota love going on today. Anyways, not to digress too far. Not like I ever do. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> He said that he heard from the uh, head brewer at um, Surly that this beer is sort of a cross flavor wise, um, flavor notes wise anyway, um, between darkness, which is freaking awesome, and, and abrasive. So it can't be that bad. So you guys know I'm loving me some black IPAs. I'm going to stop flapping my gums, get the top popped on this, get it in the glass, and tell you what's up. Yeah, here comes my favorite sound. Yeah, baby. I love hearing those cans crack. Now, at time of review today, um, this beer is under a month old. Now, me having a beer under a month old of this uh, from this brewery all the way from Minnesota here to Maryland is totally freaking awesome. Thanks again, Rich. You the man. So, let's get a gander on this and tell you what's up in the appearance department. Look at that, guys. That's pitch black. Ain't no light coming through that one. It was coming out like stream out of the can. And I could see like it was a little bit brown looking, but no way. Ain't no light coming through that. We got a rock solid, tight around the edges, a little soap sudsy at the top, mm, like finger and three quarters head. Take a look at that, guys. That's a gorgeous beer, man. That is that is really inviting looking. Appearance-wise, this reminds me a lot of um, uh, Mountain Standard that I reviewed from Odell and maybe the Dark Vine from Ithaca. Those are my two re most recent Imperial Black IPAs, and I was geeking out on both of those, man. This is one of my, when they're done right, and it's hoppy and up in your grill, and it's really still an IPA, not a hopped up porter, I'm digging it. So let's get an aroma on this and tell you what's up in that department. Let's see. Well, right off the bat, up in your face with hops, a little bit of citrus. I don't know if I'm getting those mango notes like I get in abrasive, but it's citrus. There's a decent amount, a little bit of dankness in there. Pine. Maybe a bit of like earthy hop, like a, like almost like a fuggle smelling kind of thing, but it's it's not like that dirt that smell you get from like East Ken Goldings and Fuggles. Really piney, citrusy, and and like has a deep resinous tone. Also in the background, I'm getting a little bit of coffee, like a mild chocolate aroma, real mild caramel. That's all playing in the background. It's not as much. The hops are really more present in this. And as it should be, it's a black IPA, not a hopped up porter, like I said. So, this is making my mouth water. It's been way too long since I've cracked into a bad boy like this. Cheers, guys. Let's see what the taste is like. Oh, damn. Hell, yeah. This is the perfect temperature. I've got down in my cellar. It's still freaking cold, but i um, down here, but... This is drinking about, like, I'd say, like, 48 to 49 degrees, which I like. Look at that glass lacing, guys. Instant. 
surly quality all the way through. You can tell their fingerprints are all over this. Um, I've drank a good bit of surly beers. And man, this has got their hands all in it. Flavor-wise, okay, you get pine, you get in citrus bitterness like citrus zest, maybe like orange citrus zest or maybe blood orange citrus zest. I'm getting like a coffee aftertaste. It's really mouth-coating because of the oats. The alcohol wasn't in the aroma, and it's totally hidden in this beer as well in the taste. I get a little warming in the chest to know that it's nearly a 10% beer and its presence is there. But damn, that is a tasty beer. It's got, it's not a mega complex beer. Black IPAs don't tend to be super complex because of all the stuff that's going on, I think, sometimes with them. But, man, the, the caramel is in there, too, taste-wise, in the aftertaste. It's like caramel and coffee in the aftertaste. Or maybe you, you took some really dark, um, I guess, molasses. Yes, yeah, molasses more than, than it is caramel. Molasses and coffee with that pine and citrus. Damn, this is a good beer. Rich sent me two of these. One for Johnny the Stunt Drinker. I'm going to have to be really be... Johnny, you're going to have to be on your best behavior, dude, to, to get this one because th this is wanting to stay stay here and be poured down uh, DJ's neck for uh, round two after this one. <laughs> now, yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up, baby. You know, well, well maybe not. Anyways, um, man, really lots of layers of flavor. Um, let me get another taste of this, see if I get anything else. There's the earthiness that I smelled in there. I don't, I don't, I'm not getting really translated to the taste. I'm getting a, a like nice resounding bitterness that coats in your mouth, but it's a pleasant bitterness. It's not like biting or leaving a hard fingerprint because it goes away, and it's got a dry finish to it as well, and it makes you want to come back for more. Man, this is just a freaking bumping ass black IPA. It's one of the best ones that I've had, and I've, drank, I've had quite a few of them. So what do we grade a beer like this? You hear me geeking out. <clears throat> and I think I could pick more flavors out if I sat here longer, but I'm wanting to pound this. Anyways, um, Rape Beer is given a 98, which is A-plus level. I don't know about all that. Um, Beer Advocate's given a 94. I'm going to give it close to a 98. I've had a, a lot of uh, a lot of black IPAs. This is as good or better than, than many of them I've had. And the highest grade I've given one is, is a 97. And I think I'm going to give this that 97. It's it's knocking on the A pluses door. I think with maybe a tweak or two, um, it would be there. But it's nearly a, a perfect beer, totally complete for the style that it's supposed to be in my book. This is all really subjective, as you guys know, and in my opinion, this is just a fucking kick-ass black IPA. So, if you guys have had this, let me know what you think. You know, give me your little comments down in the section. We'll have a little quid pro quo, and we'll rock it. So, till the next time, you guys got to do something really important for me. You got to think globally. You got to drink locally. You got to support the craft beer movement. Help keep this thing growing. Some more beers, more collabs like this between three breweries, though. I don't know how much the other two did on this because this tastes really a lot like a surly beer. Um... And kind of like they're saying, there is some of those notes of between darkness crossing into into abrasive, but I don't know if it goes that far. But anyways, um, yeah, awesome beer. Bravo to this recipe. Really tasty. I hope they brew it again. If they do, man, it's going to be something that, that I'm, I, I would be willing to trade for and seek out definitely again and be knocking on my buddies up in Minnesota door saying, hey, hook a brother up. I got to have me another one of those. So. Thanks a million for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Rate, comment, subscribe, hit that like button. You know what's up. Till the next time, thanks again, Rich. I really appreciate my brother. Thanks again for sending this. Until then, I got nothing for a, but a bunch of love for you and a big ass damn. Peace out.